Hey folks, I know it's been a little while. I've been kind of busy. I've been so busy I haven't even taken any pictures or anything. Not a lot of great fish, not great, great. Dealing with a ton of weather, of course, it's that time of year. I even have, I, I haven't taken any pictures to put on my reports blog. I mean, had some, these, had, you know, same thing, speckled trout, small black drum, oversized redfish. Uh, that's what's been going on. But, in this video, I'm going to show you what happened yesterday. And, how much fun it is to throw money in the water. takes my stress away I want to go fishing try and cast my blues away I want to go fishing I don't want to watch the clock I want to go fishing I don't ever want to stop well I think I have to say goodbye to these Good old brown extra tufts. Right here where they bend, they look like they're dry rotted. And my toes seem to be getting wet. I have really broke these in though. Good old extra tufts. Right there. I know you can't see it, but Right there, there's some cracking. So, to keep with the theme of this video, here's some gray ones I bought, and they're spares. Yep, you always gotta have spare everything. That's my motto in life. See that? That's my spare, spare anchor. I lost my anchor yesterday. At the jetties. 20 foot of stainless steel chain. Shackles, stainless shackles, stainless swivels. 18 pound uh, grapnel hook anchor, reef and rock anchor, covered in the black sheathing, the black nylon protection, north side of the North Jetty, on a charter with two great people, and it was so steadfast we ended up just sitting there. We couldn't go anywhere. So we just sat there and fished. Well, hindsight is twenty twenty, but the way the wind and the current was, I had to kind of put up and put the anchor up in the rocks. And it's not a pure jetty anchor. It's just kind of a do all. And I'll show you again. This is my spare. As you can see, this is a galvanized reef and rock anchor. What I do is I lash it down here. I lash it right here with stainless wire. And usually, when I pull on this, this snaps, maybe this snaps, and the anchor will come right up. Well, 
it's like I dropped this down in the mouth of Jaws yesterday. Once we got anchored, I couldn't tell if it was the anchor, chain, what was hung. I mean, I just couldn't tell. It was so tight, I tied it off straight up and down. And the waves would just sit there and go, mm -hmm. trying to jerk it out. And it just, it never came out. And as you can see, these aren't like jetty anchor, you know, rebar. These aren't meant to bang or to bend. Okay. That thickness. I mean, look at this. There's my finger. Even though I have bent these before. So there's 20 foot of chain down there like this with the black sheathing on it. I'm having to redo this whole thing again. I just bought a new anchor and new chain and I haven't even bought, you know, sheathing or shackles or anything. And I'm up to $195. The old saying is, if you want to play, you gotta pay. Actually, I'm going to take this sheathing off here. Because I got a new roll and I'm going to put it on. So it covers the whole thing. See how I'm short on it right here? Short on it. And I, I really like the 20, the 20 foot of anchor system, uh, 20 foot of chain. It really holds you good. Uh, we caught some fish. I mean, we had some pup black drums, uh, some yellow mouth. Uh, what else did we end up keeping? The speckled trout bite was terrible. We went to a really great spot. We got one keeper, one throwback. That was it on a really good spot. It's hard to imagine right now. It's raining. It's kind of gloomy outside. It couldn't have been better weather yesterday. It was perfection. November perfection. And here's December 1st. And it's real kind of crappy weather. This is what I'm going to be doing today. Well, first thing I got to do is take off this old sheathing here. This chain guard, <laughs> I'm really surprised. I mean, really surprised. I don't get more people asking me about this because, I mean, it's some really great stuff. Especially if you've got, you know, one of those expensive gel coat boats. But then again, expensive gel coat boats to the guys today, they're not anchoring. They're spending three grand on trolling motors and batteries, battery chargers for the GPS trolling motor dudes. You know, they don't anchor. If you've got, if you've got some fancy boat, you're pretty much anymore anchoring is a thing of the past but then there's some of us who aren't spending that kind of money so now since this piece I had on this chain was too short I'm going to put on a piece that goes the whole length well the first thing you got to do is you need to run a pull cord through the end of your chain guard sheathing. I'm using this giant spiky nail with some black thin like paracord on it. We'll see how this works. I've got my chain guard kind of on a hook here and I'm going to be spooling it off and I've got my paracord on a old yo-yo here hand fishing line yo-yo what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this and run this cord 25 feet inside so I have something to help 
pull the uh, anchor chain through. So I'm going to get that started. And it's good to use something big. So you got like this. You can see now the cord is going in there. Something to push through. You need something to push it through. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that has a super pointy end on it. And you'll just, I'm just working this through. Yes, you may seem, say to yourself, it seems kind of arduous doing this. But let me tell you something. This is probably one of the finest products I've run into in a long time. And <clears throat> the link will be in the video description below where it says show more. Just so you know, this is one of the products that I have found through research. And I found this stuff because I pay close attention to the aluminum boating industry in New Zealand and Australia. As I always say, they forgot more about building aluminum boats than I think American companies ever know. I mean a real aluminum boat. Your, uh, your John boat, that's not what I'm talking about. Although this would work if you don't want to make a lot of chain noise on your John boat. This would work if you don't want to put a lot of chain noise or screw up something on your $100,000 bay boat. Just going to work this all the way through. Alright, sorry, sorry, sorry for the bad lighting in here, folks, if it turns out. But what you have to do is you got to secure the chain on one end. And I, I don't have enough length here. It's always better if you have two people. I don't have two people, so I have to come up with a system. So I got my chain connected here just to this hook. And I got it running the length all the way down. And I'm keeping my chain guard real tight. And I got the string in it. And what I'm doing is I secured the string to the inside of the boat here. I'm using the uh, I'm using my hook loop here on my pole holder okay you got to do some serious MacGyver stuff when you don't have two people two people it works out a whole lot better so what this is gonna do it's gonna hold the chain relatively taut and then you're going to Chinese finger this guard onto the length of chain so that's how I do it. It seems kind of crazy. It seems kind of weird. But once it's done, it's done. It's one of those kind of projects. Here's the end of the chain. I got the chain guard. I'm holding it taut. And I'm going to push and let it go. Push and let it go. Push, let it go. See how it works its way? It's like a snake eating a snake. That's a cool analogy. A snake eating a snake. So, since I don't have a second person here to help me, what I'm going to end up doing is I just keep tightening up on the chain. And once it's on, it's a done deal. You never have to mess with it again. And then I'm going to show you how you fasten it to... How you fasten the chain guard to the actual chain itself. It goes on relatively smoothly. Most people aren't doing 20 feet. I am. Most people do what? The normal Joe out there in the St. John's River in Jacksonville, Florida. What's he running? If he's running eight foot of chain, he's running a lot. I'm sorry I can't wait to some perfect weather day. So the light is perfect. And everything is perfect because I got to get this done. Uh, like I said, I ordered 
chain and I ordered another anchor uh, I can get another chain guard very easily I'm gonna put all the information in the links below all right well I got this all pretty much complete now all I need to do is lash the ends of the chain guard to the chain and what you basically do is you pull up some slack you're gonna need a way to hold the end I got a nail here on a shackle and you're gonna fold this in is but you're going to fold it in about an inch at least. And sometimes you need a tool, or I'm getting lucky here, I'm doing it with my finger. And you're going to fold that in the very, very end. And I choke up on it to give it some slack. And you're essentially doubling the thickness of your chain guard at the end. So see how nice that is laying over right there? All right. So what I want to do is I want to take it up to where basically one link for me to put on a shackle is sticking out. And that's the perfect length. The perfect length right there now you just zip tie it and you've got a couple different ways of doing it what are very durable are these stainless steel zip ties they're kind of pointy on the end so they're easy to poke through here because that's exactly what you're going to be doing or you can use a really big heavy duty zip tie like this one but you don't want to use a zip tie too small like that one that white one I'm thinking about going to the stainless ones because they really seem to work I had them on here before you like I said you don't have to use the stainless ones I can see that it goes together like that And I'm going to pinch this and back in here where I doubled it, I'm going to work this through a link. I'm working this through a link. Okay. And see how nice these poke right through. And you want to get some serious purchase on there. That's a good one right there. And now you zip it. And that's going to hold. I always like to use pliers right inside here. And that is now going to hold your chain guard on there really good. What I do is I'll usually maybe pinch that right there and I work it back and forth and snap it off clean just like that. There it went. It snapped right off clean. Now there's not any really cut hazard or anything. That's nice and clean. And then I will do it one more time on the other side. So let's do it again. You got to just think of a clean, durable end is what you're wanting to do. So don't make the mistake that I always used to make is you got to figure out on your zip tie before, beforehand so you're not going backwards on it. Turn it around, get it inside that link. Go through the doubleness of it that you just did. Make sure you get a good purchase on some of it and push it through. 
and then zip tie it. Pull it nice and tight. And you can, I've even backed these up again. <coughs> I've even backed these up again, which is with a nylon or plastic zip tie. Work that back and forth and that stainless will break. And how I mean backing it up is taking a zip tie see if I got the right ones here. There's a nice thick beefy. I always keep a lot of different zip ties around. Okay. And you can back it up by pushing it through on the bottom of this link. All right. In the bottom of the link, but you're going through the link behind it. And just take any stress off of it. You got to be able to work it through. See if you can't get it to come out the other side. That's the reason these metal zip ties, stainless ones, are so good because they poke through all on themselves. So there we go. I got it through and I'm just going to do a backup here. Everybody likes that sound. Pull it real tight. And then I'll trim this one off real tight with my Mora Eldris EDC. Now you can, if you've got another zip tie, you can go through the same hole now or start another hole. I like to just go through the same hole and I went backwards on it so I got to turn it around and do a backup on the other side of the link. Show you what this looks like when it is 100% complete. Get out my Eldris, the perfect EDC of all time, and there you go. And you can push the two lobes sort of in, and everything is a nice uniformity. So here's what it really looks like at the end. I got the two stainless gripping on each side of the link, squishing it down where this link ends and the next link begins. I just ran these two through and they fit right in the hole. Look at that. See how that's going around each link, going around each link. So each link has gone around, each link has gone around as a backup. And that's it folks, that's how you secure the end. Now we have to work on the anchor end. Okay, now I have the, where I wanna cut it because I've got the extra. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up an old junky blade here. This old uh, shoot the shop hook bill. And I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to sizzle through the nylon anchor sheath. Woo, there you go. 
works like butter and I want to sizzle through it and uh, don't want it fraying up and everything because we still got some work to do at the end here there we go so you just want to melt it all right do it with an old junkie knife don't do it with your good EDC and there we go sizzled right through it now it's all melted we're even gonna do that just a little bit more all right so now this end here I can take my nail out now this is all spare you give to a friend who has a little dinky boat and uses next to no anchor or anchor chain so now that we got all that done move all this crapola to the side and now this end is melted because now I need to pull this this is the amount of exposed chain that I'm going to attach to my literally to my anchor there's my old pull, pull cord is still on here. I've got maybe 30 minutes in this so far, folks. This is not a big deal. But let me tell you, it is the greatest deal when it comes to protecting your gel coat. Or like me, I don't want to hear a bunch of chain clickety-clacking in all over my boat when I'm pulling up to a, an awesome trout spot. I make enough noise when I anchor up. So, like before, I'm trying to position the camera here so you can see this. Like before, I'm going to take at least an inch or more, and I want to go in and I want to double this at the very end. I'd say many times at least a half a finger. We can get this all doubled up so it's all nice. Just like before. Now I got it doubled up all the way to here. So that's a good measure right there. Now this is supposedly 3 16 inch chain. And I think the sheathing, if I'm, if I'm not sure, the sheathing is compatible for about everything because it expands and the tighter it pulls, the more of a Chinese finger it's making. So there it is. It's doubled up. Just like before, I'm going to take my stainless steel zip ties. I'm going to go around each side of one of the chain links. All right, hopefully this one will work. There we go. I've had these stainless ones let go. They don't break, but they let go. And I just ended up replacing them with regular nylon zip ties. So I go in here and I'll hold it. And I'll pull it. And then bend it. Yeah, anchoring is becoming a lost... And anchor rigging is becoming a lost art with the Willy Weekender products that are out there today. And I don't mean any disrespect to anybody who has any of that. But that's what these companies are doing. They're targeting the person, mostly, 
with, you know, uh, depth finders that emulate your, your, your smartphone screen that you're going to stick your wet, sticky hands on. And you're going to go like this and move stuff around. I just saw one in Fishing Tackle Retailer, in which I subscribe to. Brand new Lowrance coming out. I don't know how absolutely brand new it is, but what are they doing? They're making your phone where you can answer your phone and do your emails or I guess everything right off of your, your uh, depth finder screen. It pairs everything up. I call this just, you know, it's it's called the not necessity, but the convenience world. You know, there's Joe Power Banker. He's got, you know, six hours to fish out of the whole month. Okay. He wants everything to be as easy as possible. He doesn't know how to catch fish, but boy, I'll tell you, he's going to try to buy his way into it. And that's what all this is. So, the art of anchor rigging and anchoring, you know, because of the GPS trolling motors and all that stuff now. I mean, that's fine and dandy. But, I'm sure boat salesmen are just like car salesmen, possibly. They, they see somebody coming and, you know, they're going to make all their money on all the fancy stuff I'm not into it and the reason I'm not into any of that is because just so you know folks it might be a rude awakening to you all that shit breaks all that shit breaks and that's not something I want in my world because of the fact that I got enough shit that breaks. Oh, damn. Look at that. See? I got to turn it around. I'm doing the same thing as before. I'm backing it up with a nylon zip tie on the link, on the chain link below. And cutting it off. So, that's what the world's become. You don't have to know shit. All you got to do is buy your way into it. And yeah, a lot of guides are using trolling motors and stuff like that. And it gets you into spots where I would never anchor. Especially around here. I wouldn't anchor in... Damn, there it is. I got to turn it around again. You know, they're, they're, you, can anch you can do your spot lock on your trolling motor in a place where I'm never going to throw my anchor. Especially around here because there's so many dangerous anchoring positions at the jetties. But, it's no biggie. I get through life. I get through life. My customers, they don't, they don't care either way long as we're having fun it's, if we're not out there having fun one way or another then it's my fault all right so there's the end all completed let me get this out of the way there's the rigging of the end all completed on the anchor end of the chain so let's put the anchor on all righty well i'm doing a body cam position on the camera this time there's my top shackle I'm gonna run that in there I guess that's the position I wanted in tighten her up
Yep. Everything, you know, there's an old saying, make, get a product that's a convenience product and make a million dollars. It's just that simple. So there you go. I got everything, just the chain. Then down here is where my sheathing starts. So it gives me some playroom here. If you don't know already, if you've never been on my boat, you buy this at Harbor Freight. Stainless steel locking water, w w wire, not water. One of these will last me two years, three years. It's a pound. Let me get some cutters. Okay, and then what I do, and this was just what was supposed to work yesterday, but it didn't. It's halfway down the anchor. About halfway, I guess right here. I do a single wire loop and then I haywire twist it. Haywire twist it. Sorry, I tried I'm trying to keep the camera where y'all can see it. Let's see, that ain't working. Let's try here. Is that better? Not really. All right, let's try it there. So then I haywire twist it. Cut off my tags here. That's what you should do on every jetty anchor. But for some reason, everybody says, how come you don't use zip ties? I got a 26 foot boat with the 1400 pound fishing team on it. Zip ties don't hold my anchor just on anchor. So now we're gonna come down to the other end here. I'm gonna pull off some wire. I keep this wire right on my boat. I have an entire video of adding a place where I keep all this right in the bow of my boat. I did an entire thing about a secret storage container. So right now I'm going to give it a little bit of slack. See how it's a little slacky. And I go through once down here and come around. No. I'm gonna... And then one more time, and I double it for myself. I double it here at the end. <coughs> Give it a little slack and do haywire twist again. And when this gets stuck, this chain will break it. No problem if I'm not stuck in some boulders like hell and back. I don't know if my anchor was stuck yesterday or my chain was stuck, to tell you the truth. Half the time, I believe, your anchor will come out because it's big. But your chain gets stuck at the jetty rocks between a rock and a hard spot. So now I'm going to cut that off after I did that. And I take the end and yeah, I don't have it. I'm not doing the troll motor thing until I somehow become a Lake Pontchartrain, Louisiana, Slidell, Louisiana fisherman because I'm not going and running through 36 volts of battery and then having to, uh, have another battery charger. I already got a battery charger on my boat. And then I have to run uh, three batteries. I got to find a place for them. I don't think I want to find a place for them. And then I have to come up with a way to mount the trolling motor. So, 
None of that. I'll continue anchoring. And this is the anchor that I have been using, and it works for me. Overall, this is what I call a reef and rock anchor. It's kind of a do-all. So now I have to go fix the end of the anchor line in which I cut and ended up letting all this fall to the bottom. So now I got to go fix that and I'll be putting this back up in the boat. And I'll show you when everything is completely all done on this rainy, gloomy, doomy day. Now, one thing I failed to mention is about halfway through every single boating project. I don't care what you're doing. Go get yourself a PBR. 16 ounces at least. Ah, makes every project go just a little better. I don't care what you're drinking. I don't care what I don't care what flavor. My flavor comes red, white, and blue. And uh, if you don't have any, tell the wife, get out there, get in the car, and run down to the store and get me some damn, some beer, some PBR, while I'm doing this here boat project. And unless you're out here helping, you got to commit to the cause one way or another. And that might be her running down to the store and getting you some PBR. Alrighty, well, you know, I had to cut the end of my anchor line, so I went a little crazy this time. There's the end with the shackle. And I commonly do this because the end of there takes so much abuse. I run my anchor line through this reinforced uh, tubing. And... This time I went a little crazy. I did the uh, weaving it, and then I decided to take whipping waxed thread, and I whipped it. This is it right here. I've had this for like ever. You buy a spool of this, and sailors use it a lot. Um, I've had this forever. And then I whipped the end. And then, of course, what you do is, at, towards the end, you know, you put in a wire like this and you go over it. And then you slip the end through here and pull it through, kind of like when you, you know, wrap a fishing rod. So I went a little nutty. But the end is really secure. So it's time to put it back in the boat and be ready for fishing. Losing an anchor. If you're not losing an anchor at the jetties, then you just ain't fishing. And I've gone at least two or three years, maybe even longer. Maybe two or three years since I lost one. So there we go. Let's put her all back in the boat and go in and have another BBR. All right, there she is, back in her chute. It's dark, but the spotlight is on it. <clears throat> yep, got to pay to play. But I'm kind of used to it. So don't forget to comment. Check the links below in the video description where it says show more. And don't be afraid to subscribe and click that bell for notifications of future uploads. This is Captain Dave. Thanks for watching.